Who's ready for a Fresco Friday tip? Oh, you are? Okay, well, cool. In this Fresco Friday, I'm gonna show you some tricks and tips and different ways that you can add color to your illustration. Let's head over to my iPad. Okay, so the first one is to use reference layers. Reference layers allow you to put your color on a separate layer from your line work, which makes things a lot more flexible and easy to change and adjust as you go. So to do this, it's as simple as just tapping on your layer and then hitting set as reference. So now we can go ahead and make a new layer below, come over here, grab a color, and we can use the paint bucket to fill in our illustration, but on a separate layer. And that leads us right over to my next tip, which is to use the color margin adjustment when you're using the paint bucket fill, especially when you have line work that's got a little bit of a grit and texture, because in these situations, you might end up with like a halo effect if you don't play around with that margin. So to use the margin, you just use the paint bucket as normal, tap to fill, and you'll see we've got this margin here, and if it's all the way down, you'll see we get this little bit of a halo around the outside of our line work. And we can move this up just until it goes too far and goes through our line work. You wanna find that spot right before, and that way you won't get any of that weird halo around the edges. As you can see, you may have to fine tune this a little bit. The outline on this letter has got way too many openings, so we can't really go too far at all. So we'll have to manually go and figure that one out. So we'll do the same thing here. And now I'll just go back in with a brush and just clean up the edges on some where there wasn't enough border for the color to know to stop. Another tip I mention all the time is to double tap the modifier button so that you can use your brush as an eraser. This is really helpful when you're trying to maintain the same texture. The next tip is to use the color inside setting within the brushes. So this is a really cool feature that adapts as you're coloring based on where you start. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna select this pink color here, and because we have our line work set as a reference layer, we can still work on our layer below, but with color inside selected, I can come in here and just start coloring and it's gonna keep me within those lines, which is a pretty rad feature. So I can go ahead and bump my brush size up so I can do this faster. And as you can see, it even avoids the eyes and it's just a really nice quick way to, to color without having to be precise. And it'll stay wherever you start. So for example, even with these fingers here, if I start within here, it's gonna not let me do the other ones. And it'll stop us here. Really cool feature. And then we can go ahead and like do the background thing. I think maybe we'll do like a yellow color. You can even do this with like a, a grittier brush if you want to experiment with some texture and it'll still lock you in to that shape. Really fun feature. You can also use it on your line work as well. So maybe I don't want this outline of this character to be in black. Maybe I want it to be in like a darker purple or red color. So I can come in here let me switch back to my anchor brush. And if we go back to our line work layer, because obviously we wouldn't be able to see it if it was on the layer below, and I can just recolor this line work. This is a really handy feature. Cool, so now let's say we wanna do the same thing for that outer circle, and then we can clean up these edges right there. So I'm gonna come in here and let's see, maybe I'll grab this like gold color. So now what I'll do is just start within here and then just draw right up to that line. And then we can come in here and do the rest. We can just zoom in here to be a little bit more precise. You can see here I could clean up this line and now we can finish off this bottom part, which I forgot to do. So these separate things, it's gonna stop for all of them. So it can get pretty precise. Another more common way to do this is through locking the transparency of a layer. So we can come up to our line work layer and go to lock transparency. And this will allow us to change the color of everything that's on this layer by drawing over it. So I'm gonna just grab this rough fill brush and I think I don't wanna use black in this illustration. I just wanna use darker colors. So I'm gonna come over here and grab this dark blue green, make the brush bigger. Then I can just color over this black line work. Actually, let me, I had draw, uh, I had color inside still turned on, which I didn't want. That's why it wasn't allowing me to fill in the center of the, uh, oh, cool. And I think I wanna do the same for this. As you can see, it was a little bit annoying to do that same thing with the lock, with the transparency locked because there's all this stuff that's close. Another way you could do this is to make a new layer on top of it. And what we could do here is just draw a shape. Just gonna grab a, my inking brush. And what I'm gonna do is just draw a shape over what I want to change the 
color of. So we'll just go like that and fill this in. You wanna make sure that your reference layers are turned off or it won't let you fill in this shape because it'll be referencing the line work layer. So we grab the paint bucket, fill this in, and now what we can do is make this layer a clipping mask to the one below. And now our black line work is blue or dark blue. And then we could do the same thing for these rectangles if we wanted to and get this teal color. So I'm just making a shape around the outside and then filling that in. The cool thing about this is it's a non-destructive workflow, which means if we turn this off, our original line work is still exactly the same. Hopefully you found these coloring tips helpful and maybe it gave you some ideas for new ways that you can incorporate color into your work. While you're here, check out this other video where I use these amazing Rizzo effect brushes. I feel like the things that you learned in this video will translate really well into using these brushes and creating this really cool Rizzo print effect. If you don't know what Rizzo print is, I talk about it in the video, so I'll explain it there. All right, good talk.